Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. So I am back finally with a ranking video for all the palettes that I tried in 2021. I keep forgetting what year it is. I'm like 2020, 2020. Like it makes no sense to me that it's already 2022. Like what happened? Like, where are we? Like, what dimension is this? Is this like the fifth dimension? I'm not sure, but here we are. So I owe you guys a favorites video wrapping up all my favorite products for 2021. So I figured I could start out this series of videos with all my wrap up from 2021 with a ranking video where I rank all 25 of the palettes that I tried in 2021. Now, these 25 do not include any collaboration palettes that launched in 2021. So we're talking about like the Lethal is Dead collaboration with Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa is Dead. Angie's- Sorry, I can't search that, but I can search by title, actors, year, and categories like romantic comedies or sci-fi. Ma'am. Angie's palette with Kaleidos Cosmetics, my own collaboration, and the other two collaborators with Odin's Eye. So none of those palettes are included. And I'm also not including any palettes that I used for sponsored videos. So I did a few sponsored videos and I utilized some palettes in those videos and we're not gonna rank them. So I am strictly talking about the 25 palettes that I tried and actually tried. So I have videos featuring them or I tried them, filmed the looks, but didn't end up showing them for, re you'll see, okay? Cause you're gonna see, okay? So I have 25 palettes. Like how many times am I gonna tell you I have 25 palettes? Let's just go ahead and jump into the ranking guys. I am a little bit rusty after not filming for a while. So I am ranking my 25 palettes that I tried in 2021. Let's get into it. All right, so I have my list, I checked it twice, and I have all the palettes laid out in front of me, and I went over them like multiple times, like swapping spots and all this stuff, but we're gonna start out with number 25, which is a palette that I no longer have in my collection because it was so bad that I had to get rid of it, like, ew. So we're gonna pop it up over here. It's the Dominique Cosmetics Transition Palette. I know, I know you guys are like, what? I was so excited about that palette, guys. I like Dominique Cosmetics. I like their eyeshadow palettes. So when this launched, I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely getting this. And this is kind of different from their existing line, right? This was a larger palette. I believe it had 18 shades. I may be wrong, it may be 15, but it was a larger palette, right? And it was all mattes, neutral shades that you could use for your eyes and your face and it was just an all-in-one, okay? And I was like, oh yeah, because I love mattes. I love a good neutral. Like, I'm here for it. And then I got it, and um, you guys never got a video for this palette because it was so bad. I filmed three different looks with this palette, and I hated every single one of them. It was like applying nothing to my eyelids. It was just, the eyeshadows were so thin and so stiff in the pans. I was digging at them. I'm like, oh, hell no. I know, mm -mm. This is not the Dominique Cosmetics that I know and love, so it was trash, and I got rid of it. And it was expensive, too. It was, mm -mm. I didn't like it at all. So that is number 25. Coming in at number 24, I don't know if this will necessarily be a surprise to anybody, but the Fenty Beauty Bomb Posse Mega Mix and Match Palette. Long name for a whole lot of nothing, okay? Another palette that I no longer have in my collection. I returned it. I returned it because I was like, no, what you're not gonna do, Rihanna, okay? I love you, sweetheart, but no, mm -mm, mm. Don't you hate when people call you sweetie or sweetheart? Like, Rihanna is my girl, though. Like, Rihanna, hey, national hero of Barbados. You go, girl. So I love Rihanna, okay? And I actually like the little snap shadows. So you know the smaller ones, the six pan ones? I actually ended up liking those. I tried them out later after they launched and I think they may have done a tweak into it. But anyhow, I love those. But the other larger palettes from Rihanna, I don't like. And this one was no different. So the premise of this palette was she's taken her gloss bomb shades, three of them, and creating coordinating eyeshadow quads from them. So it was 12 eyeshadows, four for each of the three glosses. Made sense, like the concept, cute, nice, I was ready. And then I got it and I'm like, the shades barely showed up. I did a video, like I said, I will link all the videos that I did with these palettes down below, but I was like, why did I waste my time? What is this? I don't like it. 
it's not cute and I expected better. It didn't perform like the, the mattes were very thin again and then the shimmers were kind of like topper shades and I couldn't get much dimension from it and that's my issue. I have deeper skin tone but I'm like a deep tan. I'm not rich and dark and you know I'm not like you know cocoa brown but I still need pigment to my eyeshadows for them to show up and build and these Mm -mm. suffer the little children onto me this was not for me baby mm -mm. so I returned it with a quickness so those are the two that I no longer have in my collection but all the other um, 23 I have so coming in at number 23 this was sent to me in PR and I'm sorry I feel bad but the Luster Charm Palette from Alter Ego. So Alter Ego is a brand that tends to do higher end brands, mainly Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath. And this particular palette dupes the Pat McGrath Divine Rose Palette, which I actually picked up as well. So you'll see that in the ranking. Guess where that falls in? So at number 23 is this palette. One, I don't like the color story. It's neutral. I love a good neutral. And you'll realize when I go through all the palettes that a lot of my palettes ended up being neutral. I love a proper neutral, okay? But um, this one, the color story, I'm not into pinks and mauves and these muted rosy tones. And then the formulation, I know it's it's a cheaper alternative to the Pat McGrath palette. And they're trying to duplicate not just the color story, but also giving you a similar formula. And um, it, it didn't. There are no special shades in here, okay? The Pat McGrath one has four special shades. There are some nice enough shades in here and it does okay, right? But the pigmentation, the color payoff, just not there. The dimension, not there. And I just, it's a good enough palette. Like, if you truly wanted to just get a dupe palette to try it out, try out the color story, and your lighter skin tone, or maybe you like just light washes of color on your lids, this might be something to consider, but I haven't been impressed by the formulation from the Alter Ego palettes. They're okay, but they just don't blow me away. So that is number 23. All right, skipping on over to number 22. This might not surprise you guys either, or maybe it might, I don't know. It goes to the Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette. Mm. Now this palette, I actually didn't mind. I kind of liked it when I used it. It's not a bad little palette. Like the eyeshadows perform decently, like they're not bad. And it has mostly mattes, which I love. The problem I had with this palette is that it, it just doesn't inspire me. There's not a lot of depth to these shades and I feel like they could have done more. I was expecting a little bit more. Some of these shades are very close in like level of depth and to me, they're not diverse enough or different enough to give me different looks. You can definitely get different looks. I'm not saying you can't. But like it didn't blow me away and I feel like Urban Decay single eyeshadows are where you can really get oomph and their palettes just never match up to that same payoff as their singles. So yeah, that comes in at number 22, believe it or not. All right, number 21. Again, maybe a surprise to you, but I didn't love this palette. So as from Kaleidos, this is their Flower Punk palette. Now there was a whole fiasco. I barely got my hands on this palette. I went through numerous iterations trying to get this palette in my hands and I finally got it. And while I like the color story enough and while I like the Kaleidos eyeshadow formula, this one just didn't speak to me. I like this part of the palette, but when you come to the pinks, I'm like, ooh, no, I don't want them. And then these minty shades, although they're pretty, they just, they don't go, like, they don't go. And I found that I wasn't enjoying reaching into this palette because the color story doesn't quite flow and I can't really mix these with these because they clash, as you can see. And then the mints and the pinks can go. Oh, I rhymed a little bit, but I don't, I'm not into pinks, so... It was cute. It was cute. I got a cute little look. Like, it's cute. Like, the eyeshadows performed well, but I feel like the color story is my problem. And the eyeshadows, again, didn't have a lot of punch to them. They're more on the pastel side. So not a lot of oomph either. So not my favorite at all. All right. <laughs> Can you guess? No, you can't. <sighs> Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane Palette. This is not showing up on a lot of favorites lists. Uh, <laughs> for good reason, okay? 
I love Melt Cosmetics and I love their eyeshadow palettes. I get all of them, okay? I have all their eyeshadow... Do I? Yeah, I have all their eyeshadow palettes. I think the only one I'm missing is the um, that rainbow one. I have the stack. That's enough for me. The rainbow one just felt a little bit dry because they have neon pigments in them. Anyway, this one. Of course I'm going to get it, but... Mm, here's what happened. The shimmers let me down. The mattes... I'm in love with the mattes, and they're like alternating mattes for each shimmer. Well, almost, right? Almost equal mattes and shimmers. There's an extra shimmer in here. But these two light shimmers, the ones on the end, bad. Like, really bad. Chunky, flaky, which I don't love. These smoky shimmers, too, like these two are very similar. That Santa Maria and Bamba very similar very like flaky not flaky necessarily but there's a lot of fallout and that's my problem with this palette it's not that the shades are awful all right the two end shades i didn't like at all but like the shimmers are very flaky and they're very dusty and there's fallout all over the place and i can't deal with that the mattes though in love with the mattes like i love their deep grungy mattes like this to me gives dimension because i have this really rich dark brown then i have like this medium tone deep brown another deep brown with a different undertone and then this lighter shade so i feel like this is balanced with the mattes and i can get the dimension so what i do with these palettes that i don't love the shimmers i pop the mattes out and use the mattes because the mattes in here are really nice but the majority of the shades are shimmers and the shimmers just fail for me and Mel doesn't do shimmers really well and I tend to love their mattes only so of course that doesn't it's a whole palette so of course that's why it's it's lower down on the list all right number 19 <laughs> and don't fight me because I know you girls like to tussle but it's going to anti-pat oh my god so this is the divine rose palette I did not pick this up originally, obviously. I said I was not going to pick it up, and I'm not necessarily a woman of my word when it comes to Pat McGrath. I tend to pick up her Mothership palettes. It's for collector's purposes. I know I shouldn't, but I do it, and again, if you want to tussle, we can tussle, but not right now, okay? I'm filming. So, the Divine Rose palette I picked up on sale, got a pretty decent sale, and I really got it to do, well... One of the reasons I got it was to do like a comparison with the Luster Charm palette from Alter Ego. I was like, oh, perfect time. I can compare them. And this was on steep discount. I don't like this color story. Same thing goes with the Luster. I don't like it. The Luster Charm, I said it already. I don't like the color story. But these perform a lot better than the Luster Charm. And I get more color payoff and more oomph. And some of the shades are cute. Like some of them are definitely wearable. And we have some special shades in here. So I see why people like this palette. It's very wearable and special. Like you can just wear it every day. But then you can jazz it up with some of these shades. And it's not the palette. It's me, okay? It's my preferences. I don't like mauve tones. And even though this is a beautiful like everyday palette palette if you if you consider a $125 palette an everyday palette I mean you should probably use it every day so you can get your money's worth but I'm just saying like I didn't love it like there are there, there are like four shades I like out of this palette but everything else I could do without so this is strictly for collectors purposes and again don't fight me but yeah number 19 I ain't love it at all all right all right number 18 Okay, ready? Patrick Ta. And this one is showing up in a lot of favorites videos and I'm like, is it just, it's me, it's me, it's fine. And I'm okay with that. I will stand 10 toes deep in this by myself. Like I don't need a posse to back me up. Like I back myself up, okay? I don't like this. This is the Major Dimension eyeshadow palette. It's cute, all right, it is cute. And I did a video showcasing this palette and for the most part I was like, it's cute. The mattes, butter, love them. I love the mattes, okay? The shimmers are awful and don't, don't come for me. Don't do that. Don't, these shimmers are trash and you know it too. These are not your typical like shimmer metallic shades. These are not your typical frosty shades. Remember frosty shades from MAC? These are not that. These are topper shades. And when Metella Summer don't like the pop, let me say, you see all this pop, <laughs> this satin shade here? trash okay the creams i love and the matte so if i had just that part of the palette i'd be fine but more than half of the palette is shimmer and those shimmers 
no and then on top of it it has the nerve to be expensive it's like 68 dollars like 70 dollars like who are you talking to so in addition to not being my favorite like formula wise with the shimmers you have the nerve to have that price point mm -mm. if you were cheaper you would have ranked higher but that price just kicks you all the way down because i'm not here for it all right moving on because i I know people are like that's my favorite I loved it so much and so many people raved about it and I get it like that was Patrick Ta's first like dip in the eyeshadow market but I didn't like it one bit mm -mm. sorry all right number 17 I hate to say this but I'm gonna say it it goes to Violet Voss okay all right this is their Care Bears palette cute they had a mini palette as well that I didn't pick up because I was like whatever and I'm glad I didn't because this I love Violet Voss again and I will get most of their palettes the 12 pan eyeshadow palettes in this format I have most of them yeah I love these palettes okay but this palette just didn't do it for me I like the mattes again and I even like these neutral tones at the bottom well not the gold I hate a gold a yellow gold mm -mm, I don't like it but this purple I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's like filled with glitter, like micro, it's not even micro glitter, it's just straight glitter, and it falls all over the place, and it's awful, and this pink is one of the ugliest pinks I've ever seen in my life, this shimmery pink, ugly as hell, like awful, okay, so right away, like most of the palette is, is just like, no, I'm good, okay, and I feel like the other colors have been done in their other palettes, and I just, it just, look at it, it's not like given it to me and I feel like Care Bears deserved better than this and I have their other palettes that I prefer over this and this was a colorful palette that I was like alright this is gonna be cute and I got a cute look from it like this blue fantastic even this tealy green awesome but the other shades just didn't have the it factor so that's why it's number 18 I'm not gonna go more in depth than that because that's all there is to it it just didn't it just didn't hit the spot like I needed it to okay number 17 are we at 17 I believe we're at 17 right 23 22 21 20 19 18 17 no we're at number 16 okay all right so number 16 goes to a palette that I didn't really try as much but I think it's a pretty decent palette and I'll try it more but it listen okay it just didn't rank higher because it didn't okay so this is the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette I use this in conjunction with another palette in a video and I like it I really do like it it's one of my first Beauty Bay palettes I picked up like I <laughs> I picked up like seven or eight of their palettes because they're really cheap okay they're really inexpensive they were on a sale and I was like alright if I'm gonna do it let me just do a decent purchase so I can try out different palettes from them and there are a few of the other palettes that I like and um, I have to test them out on the eyes this is the only one I tested out on the eyes and I do like this palette and I like the color story so it's not that I don't like it it's just that there are others in my collection that I tried out that I liked more but this is a really good palette and I love this color story it works for me except for like these cranberry shades well this I wish this red was deeper because you have the bold red so I wish this one was deeper but it's a good palette it's a cute palette and I like the greens as well I love a good green I love a good teal and this palette was pretty nice and you can get some easy breezy looks oh god yeah you can so yeah it's coming in at number 16 but it's not like a bad palette it's just my heart was elsewhere this year well last year yeah so number 15 also goes to a colorful palette and it's a, it's the palette that I use in the same video with the Beauty Bay one. So that goes to the Ace Boutte Tropical of Vibes palette. So this was one of their new launches in 2021. And I like it. I do like the greens though. I mean green is not my favorite, favorite color. But they have army greens and like those more murky mustard greens. And I do like this palette. The shimmers, the shimmers for the Beauty Bay one too. They have this different texture that I feel like a lot of these indie brands are doing. They have this slippery, slick texture to them. Almost like they're crushed foil, so they're slick like that. And like shiny, instead of being like a true metallic or a true frost shade. And I don't know that that's my favorite shimmer formula. 
I prefer like just the true regular shimmer formulas. Think of Sydney Grace, like those shimmers. That's what I prefer because I feel like those layer well on even crepey eyelids. If you have lines in your eyelids like I do, I feel like those just sit better than the shiny ones. These can get a little crumbly and they can settle into lines. So I don't like the shimmers, but it's a mostly matte palette. And I love that for me. And I love these shades. So definitely coming in at number 15. Not for not trying though, because it's still cute. But I just feel like I fell in love with less colorful palettes this year. Which is why this one kind of falls kind of in the middle. Like it's not bad, but it's, it's not the greatest, you know. And number 14 goes to, yeah, the Blueprint Palette from Melt Cosmetics. This is a, another palette that... Mm, I liked uh, quite a lot actually this matte blue whoo love it these um, brownie shades really sexy as well and I did a couple of looks with this palette and I really liked it like none of the shades really were a flop even the shimmers in this they weren't that crumbly flaky fallout heavy texture from Melt Cosmetics I feel like they did really well with this and I really like this palette again it's like I can pair this with the Mary Jane mattes and I'll be happy like these are the kind listen what is going on I'm not talking to you go away Ooh, child. Mm -mm. here you go having an Apple watch and then all things go berserk I can't take it okay so this palette is like my favorite combination of colors blues love blues and then these bronzy tones like no yellow gold I think this is really nice I really like this palette so Definitely get coming in at number 14. All right, number 13, lucky number 13 goes to a new palette, a new brand, like a new situation on the market. This is from Hindash. This is the Butopsy palette. And a lot of people have been talking about this. A lot of people love this palette and I am no exception. So this is a beautiful palette. It's different than anything that we've really seen. It's a little bit innovative, you know, because they're gradient shades. So even though you only get six shades in the palette, like six pans, you get multiple shades because you have a gradient again. So you can mix and get like a specific shade from this palette. And what I like about this is that you can use this on the face as well and it translates well. Not many eye and face palettes really do the formulation well that it works on both eyes and face equally. And I think this really did that. This builds up really beautifully on the eyes. You can get the gradients, you can get simple, easy eye looks from it. And then you can use the like the colorful shades on your cheeks and they work really well. And then you can even use the brown tones as contour and highlight shades. And I really like this. I really did like this. I have to use it a little bit more, but I definitely fell in love with the formulation. Now, don't swatch it with your fingers because the swatches are terrible. It really swatches poorly and Hindash did mention that. But the formulation is not meant to work for swatches. It's meant to actually work in action. So really love this palette. This is coming in at number 13. Number 12, colorful palette, okay? This is the BH Cosmetics. Did you hear BH is a filing for bankruptcy? Don't even get me started. But this is the Blueberry Muffin palette. And Lauren May Beauty is the person that made me get this. She raved about this palette and I was like, all right, let me go ahead and get it. And I really like the looks that I got from this palette. It's a very subdued, like muted color story, but colorful at the same time with those pops of blues. This is perfect for the color of the year, which is that peri shade. It's like a periwinkle purple blue. It is stunning. So I think this actually fits that um, color theme really well. So if you wanted a color of the year palette, this may be one for you to check out. I really love the matte. Like I love a proper gray concrete shade. That is stunning. And the purples really work well. These are the kinds of purples that I will mess with because they're pastel and they're beautiful. So yeah, I really like this palette. Now, is it the best colorful palette? Not necessarily, but I really had fun using it. So that's why it's at number 12. So number 11, all right, goes to this NARS Cosmetics Bijou Eyeshadow Palette. This came out for holiday and I had to get it like, right? It is such a beautiful grungy like fall themed palette and I really like it. These shimmers again are kind of those silky shades 
but some of them are more buttery like those true metallics and I love that and then some are more subdued like this dark brown where is it this this bronzy brown like oh god it's so good and then I get the depth that I need because they have these deeper shades and they apply really well like NARS hit it out the park with this formulation and it's no longer available but if you got your hands on it then mmm and these more cranberry wine shades there are certain reds and cranberries that I don't like but when they are like this I can get into it so Bijou number 11 11 yes all right moving on number 10 so we're getting into the top 10 now you ready for this elf I know you're like elf I'm like yes elf so elf did a collaboration with Chipotle random as hell I don't know what was going on but I was like it looks cute let me get it and boom I really really like this palette like this is a palette that I wish more people got their hands on because it's so good like the dark oh god the dark browns are really nice these tan shades are really creamy the greens are really nice like these shades really like blew it out the park for me and I fell in love with this palette I loved all the looks that I created and I feel like it performed really well and for the price point like elf let me find out y'all out here so really love this palette that is number 10 moving on to number nine this is a palette that I tried earlier in the year and it was actually from 2020 so it was from holiday 2020 but I didn't get to use it onto 2021 so that's why it's in this lineup it is the melt cosmetics Beetlejuice palette it is the waiting room one again one that you can't pick up anymore but I did some of my favorite looks from this palette see these reds that I'm talking about those are the kinds of reds that I can get into because they're deeper and richer and they're stunning. And grays, forget about it. I love a proper gray shade. And these grays have a little bit of neutral greeny undertone to them. Stunning. And the shimmers work really well. Like, I really love this palette, but I'm not going to talk too much about it. I will just link my video. See the video linked below. But this, oh my god, no longer available, but stunning. Keeping with Mel, we are up to number eight. Number eight goes to the brunette palette. All right, this is one that I filmed a couple of looks with, but I just didn't get around to editing the video, and I didn't get around to, like, filming the actual review, and I was like, all right, scrap it. I can't be bothered because it was just too late. But this is such a great neutral palette. I think this is one of the more wearable color stories from Melt Cosmetics. This is an everyday palette. Like if you were looking for a palette from Melt Cosmetics that you could grab and go, this would be it. I really love this palette. I think it looks great on the eyes. I can build up very easy looks. And this deep dark shade actually builds up great depth. And again, you can pull in other palettes. That's fine. And the shimmers, again, aren't those flaky ones. So they wear really well. This bronzy gold, even though it has like a little yellow gold to it, it's like an old gold. It's really stunning. So I really love this palette. I love getting all matte looks from it as well as incorporating the shimmers. I think this was really stunning. Under rated not many people spoke about this but I really like the brunette palette again Melt Cosmetics is kind of a polarizing brand not a lot polarizing polar polarizing is that the right word I'm using why does it sound wrong you ever say a word that you're sure is right but it sounds kind of wrong hmm anyway that's a great palette and I think more people should have spoken about it all right number seven it's a quickie I'm just gonna talk about it real quick it's the Too Faced light my fire palette I didn't expect to love this palette but it's such an easy little sunset situation and I love that it has these deeper orangey brown shades so this is a deep brick orange that works really well and then this yellow is nice to like blend out in the crease and the shimmers work really nicely so it's a cute little situation and I really like it. It's small, but it's like impactful. And I like to do a good sunset look. And I feel like this is like the perfect little sunset palette. It really did light my fire. So this is number seven. Number six. Okay, I have to go. So I'm going to speak a little bit fast right now. So don't mind me. Number six is the Rose Quartz palette from Huda Beauty. I did not expect to like this palette as much as I did. But I really love this palette. Now, I wish there was a little bit more depth to it. That's the only thing that I can say. I wish there was more to it. But I think it's a really good palette. And even with the pinks in it, like, I can vibe with these pinks. They're muted. They're a little bit more on the cool tone side. So they're not like, ooh, Barbie pink. 
I really like this palette and I think it did really well and it's ranking this high because it surprised me that I liked it so much. While the color story is not one I automatically gravitate towards, these marble shades like really blew me away. The different formulations really spoke to me and I really like the texture and the application of this. So that is why this is number six. All right, number five. Okay, another little palette that's really cute. This is the Dior Backstage Eyeshadow Palette in Amber Neutrals. She is the warmer sister of the collection. She has like the ready tones and I really like this. It's such a beautiful cranberry palette. It applies really well on the eyes. This deep brown really applies well. This is such a great like... Again, it's like a warmer palette, but it's not too warm, you know, because it's not like, oh, here's orange and yellow and, you know, not like the Light My Fire palette. This is giving you sophisticated warm, and I really like the formulation of these eyeshadows. So definitely a beautiful one, number five. Number four, okay, surprise, it's the Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Palette. I didn't expect to like this either. I take that purple out. Take the purple out, but everything else... Stunning! These apply so well. I did not expect to love this palette, but I'm telling you, this is such an everyday wearable palette. It smells good. It applies well, and I feel like this is Too Faced's signature good palettes. Don't buy the holiday palettes. Don't buy the cardboard palettes. Get the tin palettes, and they tend to do these holiday palettes really well, and I like it. Like, I like the bronzes. I like the, the, the neutral tones. I like the deep... I wish there was more deepening shades, but, like, that deep brown will work. It's fine. It's cute. And I think this is such an easy palette to wear. Really like it. All right, number three might not come as a surprise, all right? It's the Violet Voss Cool Vibes Palette. I already spoke about this palette in, like, my top ten favorites. This was my favorite palette at the time. This is such a good palette, and this is what I mean about Violet Voss. I love their eyeshadow palettes, and I love these specific size eyeshadow palettes. They just get these so right, and I love this color story, the cool tone neutrals. I love a cool tone, I love a taupe, I love a gray. This is just so me, and I think they did this so well, and again, the formulation is more of that smooth metallic. It's not flaky. It's not like a topper. It's just a beautiful, easy metallic that applies really well, and I love this so much. So definitely given that, number three, it's so beautiful. So are you ready for the top two? Can you guess what my top two is? I don't think you can, so I'm just gonna go into it. Number two, okay? Number two, drum roll, please. Number two goes to another Dior Backstage Eye Palette. This is the Warm Neutrals now. This one, oh, uh, who, okay, who would have thought me, Tina, Miss Colorful, would be like, oh, I love all these neutral palettes, like, no one would have thought, but this is such an easy palette. This is where you just pop this on your eyes and go. They apply well, they blend well, they layer well. They're not giving you too much, but they're not giving you too little. Like the pigmentation is there, but it's not like scary. I think this is such a beginner friendly palette. It's so easy and the dark shades really build up well and give you the depth you need. And it's so easy breezy. I traveled with this a lot. Like every trip I took, I took this palette. And that's why it's number two. It was one of my most used palettes. And anytime I was packing, it was easy because it's small. And I knew I could get a great look from it. So it's like, pop it in a bag because it is fantastic. All right, are you guys ready? Number one, number one. I really have to leave. Number one goes to... The NARS Climax Eyeshadow Palette. Oh, yes, child. Number one. This NARS palette really blew me away. I picked this up, like, later in the year. You know, I was like, all right, let me try it out. I swatched it in Ulta. I was like, I went back, so, back and forth so many times. And then I finally picked it up, and I'm like, I'm so glad I did. This is such a good palette. So it has that deep red brown, it has that beautiful army green, it has these medium tone shades, and then it has these shimmers that are just so perfect. So it's like I bring these two palettes and I'm set because I can get a really sultry look, I can get a really wearable easy look, I can just darken up my outer crease with that red and I'm happy. Pop that on the lid like two shadows and I'm done. I can use this as a highlight, use that all over the lid too, use it on the inner tear duct, done. These shimmers, Oh, the buttery shimmers. These are not the foil shades. These just are those creamy shimmers that just work so well. And I am so happy with this palette. Like, it's neutral. 
it's muted but it's still colorful in a way like it still gives you something special and I am so in love with this and the packaging like everything about this palette it's 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 whew, it just works really well and NARS really hit it out the park with this palette and I'm so glad I was able to pick this up and I am so happy with it and that is why it is my number one now let me know if you guys were able to guess any of these palettes and listen again if you want to tussle just let me know but don't fight me okay I know some of these that ranked lower may be your favorites and that's cool like we can have different opinions but this is my ranking for the 25 palettes that I tried in 2021 let me know what you think let me know what surprises are here in this collection which ones were you like I can't believe uh, it should have ranked higher it should have been lower like you tell me what you think of my collection and which ones you thought I would pick but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I will leave all the palettes linked below if I can find them and also link the videos where I featured them in case you wanted to check them out and really see what I thought I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along and until my next video which will be very soon I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy I will talk to you bye guys